What's going on guys, my name is Madeo Bakirov. I just came back from an amazing trip to Seychelles, an East African country consisting of 115 islands in the Indian Ocean. It's home to some of the world-class beaches, coral reefs, nature reserves, as well as rare animals such as a giant Aldebra tortoise. In this video, I want to show you my top 10 places to visit. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Alright, let's begin. There are three main islands in Seychelles, Mahe, Pralin and Ladik. We've started our adventure from the main island with an international airport, Mahe. The best way to begin your seashells exploration is of course by visiting the capital city Victoria. Being one of the smallest capital cities with population of 25,000 people, 2-3 hours will be enough to walk around and see the main sites. This 118 years clock tower is one of the most iconic historical features and the very center of the city, so you can start your exploration from here. Head to the Sir Solwyn Clark Market. Here you will find fresh fruits, vegetables, spices and all kinds of fish. This bustling and colorful marketplace is worth strolling around to feel the heartbeat of the city and watch the daily life of locals. 100 meters away from the market is the Sri Navasakti Vinayagar Hindu temple. The temple welcomes everyone, so you can seek blessings while enjoying the architecture of the monument. Lunchtime in Seychelles and a typical local food van. And finish your Victoria tour by trying some delicious local street food, which will cost you only around 5 to 6 dollars. In a 10 minute drive away from Victoria, you will find Eden Island, which is the only artificial man-made island in Seychelles. This island offers a selection of spectacular apartments and villas, both for rent and sale. And yacht owners can park their vessels in the international deep water marina. And now we came to the eastern part of the island and we're about to get on this helicopter and fly with Seal Air over the Mahe. Heli flight is a fun activity not to miss in your itinerary to have a truly memorable vacation. You can book it online on zealair.com, which is the only premium provider of helicopter services in Seychelles, operating to over 21 licensed helipads across the archipelago. After a short safety video, it was time to board the aircraft. We chose a half an hour flight over Mahe. This flight will cost you around $800 and it can accommodate up to 4 passengers. The pilot made it interesting by showing all of the famous locations. It was amazing to see those verdant peaks, granite boulders, crystal clear water and pristine sandy beaches from a bird's eye view. Our half an hour passed quickly and it was time to land. Just 2 kilometers away from the capital, you can find another unforgettable experience. And this one won't cost you a fortune, as admission costs only $8. And now it's time for the botanical garden of seashells. This 15-acre garden was planted more than 100 years ago and offers a close-up look at the rich local flora and fauna. A real gem for any nature lover. We didn't have a lot of time, so we decided to head straight to the main attraction. Giant Aldebra tortoise enclosure. Well, not that giant. These peaceful creatures love to have their heads and necks rubbed. Being one of the world's largest tortoises, they can grow up to 1.2 meters long and can weigh up to 250 kilograms, with largest recorded weight being 350 kilos. They also have an insane life expectancy of 200 years. Feeding them, rubbing them and observing their slow motion lives is a very special experience that we will remember for a long time. There are plenty of mosquitoes flying around them, so make sure to bring a repellent with you. During our Maya visit, we stayed in a beautiful Criollo House hotel. We had a mountain view room, and here is how our room looked like. The owner of this hotel is a professional chef, so the food here was outstanding. The best part about our stay in Criollo House was that it's a beachfront hotel, so we got to enjoy the famous Bouvalon beach every day. It's our third day on Maha Island, we just woke up and we're about to go and hike the Capolia Trail. And we have arrived to the beginning of the Capolia Trail. Capolia Trail is a 1.4 km hike of a medium difficulty. The admission fee to enter the trail is only $7. The trail takes you through a shady, dense and beautiful jungle with natural stairs made of woods and trees roots. On your way you will have some info boards that bring some interesting learning about the surrounding nature. Look, and I found this plant. Dilenia firungia, something like this. Unfortunately, only once I was editing this video, I found out that the trail is also popular for carnivorous pitcher plants, which I would love to see, so maybe it's a good idea to go with a guide. Wear comfortable hiking shoes, as there are a couple of places where they'll come in handy. It took 36 minutes for us to climb to the granite mountain top. Even though the hike seemed to be fairly easy, the views in the end are very rewarding. You get to see the capital, the Eden Island, the ocean and surrounding mountain peaks all at the same time. 
It's really glorious to be there. If I were to go there one more time, I'd grab something for breakfast to enjoy it with these views at the top. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to take a bottle of water, because it will take some sweat to make it both ways. It's always great to see what locals produce, so we decided to visit a couple of places located in a 3 minute drive from each other. First on the list was a worldwide famous rum distillery Takamaka, also proudly called the Spirit of Seashells. During the guided tour we got to know the history of the brand and the whole production process, from the sugar cane to the bottle. One thing we kept hearing over and over from Sichelwa people was A little saying in, in Seychelles that says if somebody ever gets to try red fruit that they will always come back and visit us. Diana's favorite part came at the end, tasting all the rums, both from the regular bottles and the more unique experience trying it straight from the oak barrels. She wasn't a big fan of the 69% alcohol volume though. <laughs> While Diana was tasting all the rums, I got to try a juicy and sour bilimbi fruit. Kind of like a soft and crazily sour apple. There is also a cool branded shop where you can get some merchandise and bottles. Second place was a craftsman village, Domaine de Val de Pre, where we had a coconut workshop. The first step was to remove the husk of a coconut. To do that, we were smashing the coconut against a sharp wooden stake and then pressing for it to peel off. Yeah, and in the end, she has made it. Second step was to cut it open with a knife. Of course we got to enjoy some coconut water. Next was the most difficult part, grating the coconut using a traditional seating grater. It probably looks easy when the master makes it happen. In my case it wasn't easy at all and I worked hard to grate this little coconut half to perfection. As the time passed I think I learned the correct technique. The final step was to add some water to the coconut meat, massage it and remove it. Voila! One liter of fresh coconut milk is ready to go in your curry. We have finished our adventure in Mahe and it was time to go to the airport, board the smallest plane with 20 seats and enjoy the shortest flight of 20 minutes from Mahe to Pralin. Hello Pralin airport! On the safe landing in Pralin we got greeted by the tourism board's representative and went on to the next adventure. We visited a very special nature reserve, Font Ferdinand, and learned everything about a wondrous Coco de Mer palm tree, which holds a record for both the largest and the heaviest seat on earth, that can weigh up to 40 kilos. It is endemic to only two islands in Seychelles, and resembles female buttocks on one side and belly with size on the other. And also a Coco de Mer branch serves as a perfect <laughs> cover from the rain. Our guide Ryan is a real nature lover. He told us a ton of mind-blowing info about the local environment. He even gave us little pieces of cinnamon tree to try. Yes, I see. Really spicy, I see like a chewing gum. I was really surprised to see how many plants in that area have evolved having thorns on the bottom, as protection from tortoises eating them to the ground. And then I also got to play with this beautiful and friendly seashells palm spider. They are harmless, so you shouldn't be worried. After the educational hike with almost 800 steps was completed, we were rewarded with a nice view over the Pralin Island. Next location on the must-visit list is Ancelazio Beach, which is located on the northwest tip of the island and considered to be the best beach on Pralin, both by Lonely Planet and my own liking. The incredible mix of clear turquoise water, perfect golden sand, inviting palm and takamaka trees and giant rock boulders combined make it a perfect place not only to relax, swim, sunbathe and snorkel, but also to take some photos as it's picture perfect from any angle. We've spent a wonderful day which ended with a gorgeous sunset. The next morning we woke up and came to the most popular beach of Pralin, Coat Door, where you can snap a nice photo with this hanging palm tree. As we decided to visit a small island nearby, we have jumped onto a boat, which we then have changed for a smaller boat, and crashed right into the planned destination. I didn't expect this! <laughs> wow! wow. <laughs> Arid Island. The whole island is a nature reserve, with an unspoiled beauty and rich biodiversity, home to the largest number of seabird and landbird species. Meet Annie, she is our naturalist guide who will show us Arid Island. Arid is managed by the Island Conservation Society and has only 11 human inhabitants. Annie has whistled to call the smartest bird species on the island. Seashells Magpie Robin. There are only 11 of them on the island and the guide knows each of them by their name. The difficulty when you explore Arid is that almost every step you take you can step on a lizard. The island has the highest population density of lizards in the world. In addition, there are many Seychelles giant millipedes to be found. They can grow up to 30 cm and are also a conservation priority. I also couldn't miss Eliana without trying out the Tarzan move. 
We found several nestings of white-tailed tropic birds that can dive up to 25 meters for the fish. And here is a male tropic bird flying. After a read, we were tired and hungry, so we visited Curios Island located right next to Pralin. We had a delicious Creole barbecue lunch. Fish and chicken with lentils and the tuna salad with mango were extremely good. Last thing included in the boat tour was a half an hour snorkel near a tiny and photogenic St. Pierre Island. The highlight of my snorkel was swimming next to several powder blue tanks. Fantastically colorful fish to see. It was time to leave Pralin. We hopped onto the ferry and arrived to the final island of our vacation, La Digue. Island with the most laid-back vibes and the least available infrastructure, making it perfect for a total relaxation. Me and Diana have recovered from the previous hike, and we were ready for a new one. Our hiking guide Dave picked us up from the hotel and we took a 20-minute ride to get to Grand Dance Beach, the starting point of our beach hopping hike. This hike was a difficult one. The amount of rocks we climbed over and under is equal to a very big number. Oh my god, guys, these rocks in seashells are so special. I haven't seen anything like this anywhere in the world. We underestimated the difficulty, and having 750 milliliters bottles of water per person wasn't enough to say the least. Luckily, Dave gave us some fresh coconuts and a fruit platter, which were lifesavers in our situation, and I have enjoyed them to the very last drop. Nonetheless, all this effort was absolutely worth it because we have visited a bunch of wild and wonderful places which we got to enjoy all by ourselves. If you are planning to visit Ledig, make sure to contact Sunny Trail Guide. Robert and Dave are real professionals who can show you some hidden gems that this island has to offer. And the last place on this top 10 list is my absolute favorite Ansuz Dache, which is often described as the most beautiful and the most photographed beach in the world. To get to this beach you will have to enter a national park and pay the admission fee of $7. We stayed in Ladik for 3 days and we came to this beach every day. It's beautiful both in the morning and in the evening. You might wonder what this activity is called and it's called Crystal Water Kayak Tour. And I'd say that crystal water kayaking is a must, as not only you get to enjoy the beauty of the rock formations from the ocean, but you also get to see all the coral and marine life below you. If you go to the very end of the beach Sources d'Arge, the next beach beach over there, which is only accessible by boat, is Anspiro, and now I'm gonna show it to you with the drone. Anspiro is the beach where the Robinson Crusoe movie was filmed in 1980. As this beach is only accessible by ocean, the kayak tour brings tourists here by boat. Don't forget to use your sunscreen, as you get a lot of sun exposure throughout the tour. That's it! Those were the top 10 places and activities to do in seashells. We did our PCR tests and went for a goodbye dinner at Bouvalon Beach. Luckily, we got to eat the breadfruit chips, so hopefully we'll come back to this paradise. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Have a beautiful day and I'm gonna see you in the next one.